on the spot. We get the latest coming this week to Xbox Live, go on location for a look at Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon, and Giancarlo does some shanking in our demo of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood multiplayer. Today on the spot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Today on the Spot for Thursday, September 30th, 2010. I'm your host, Sean McInnes, and this is internet celebrity, legend, uh, man about town, Giancarlo Veronini. Yes, I am all of those things and, and more. Th and more, and, and so more. much more. So, so much more. We'll expose all those other things in subsequent episodes of the show. Yes. We don't want to give away all your skills and traits just now. Yeah, it's like a treasure chest of awesome <laughs> things. I don't know. Exactly. So we've got a great show coming your way today. We've got an exclusive look at Earth Defense Force at Insect Armageddon, and uh, Giancarlo is going to be demoing the multiplayer beta for Assassin's Creed Brotherhoods, which should be a lot of fun, because as I understand it, you are actually very good at stabbing people. Yes, I am. I've been practicing for so many years, <laughs> for so, so many years. for this game to come out, it's like they, they knew. It's right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, it's great. Um, and we've also we've also got some great trivia prizes coming your way. We're going to be giving away a PlayStation 3 and a Nintendo DS. But first, let's kick it off with the latest headlines. Hey everybody, it's your GameSpot News Update for Thursday, September 30th. I'm Tor Thorson. Nintendo has narrowed the launch window for its 3DS handheld. The portable will arrive in Japan on February 26th and hit the US and Europe sometime in March. More controversial is the handheld's price of 25,000 yen. Though the US price hasn't been set, that's nearly $300, and Nintendo rarely leases a product that costs more in Japan than in the US. The price point makes the 3DS one of the most expensive launch products the company has ever released, although some analysts still think it may cost $250 stateside. In other news, it looks like World of Warcraft players will be getting a lump of coal in their stockings this holiday season. This morning, mega retailer Amazon sent out an email saying the third WoW expansion will now arrive between January 4th and January 18th, 2011. Though Blizzard had not commented on the delay, and probably won't until BlizzCon on October 22nd, it's not out of the realm of possibility. And that's because Blizzard has found success in January before. That was the month when the Burning Crusade expansion pack launched in January 2007, and that expansion was a major hit. And after all, it's World of Warcraft, didn't it? They can do whatever they want. Well, that's it, your GameSpot news update for Thursday, September 30th. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. This week on Xbox Live, in Arcade, water's your friend and foe in Hydrophobia. In the near future, a city-sized supership, an enclave for rich people and shady businesses, is a setting for an ideological conflict began by terrorist attacks. Engage in flow combat by unleashing floating oil fires, electricity, and the power of water to wipe out your enemies. In Games On Demand, stabbing your way through the Renaissance has never been so easy than with Assassin's Creed 2. Betrayed by the ruling families of Italy, Ezio embarks upon an epic quest for vengeance. To eradicate corruption and restore his family's honor, he will study the secrets of an ancient codex written by Altair. In indie games, if you love waves of mutants and hot lead, you'll enjoy Nuclear Wasteland. In 2030, Nuclear Waste has mutated the locals, it's your job to clean them up. Unlock assault rifles, a submachine gun, and a shotgun to help get that done. In game demos, the My Sim Sky Heroes demo will let you take to the sky to lead the resistance against a drone army. Defeat dangerous enemies in aerial dogfights, test your reflexes in fast-paced speed challenges, and take on massive enemy bosses. As you progress, you can build, customize, and tune your aircraft to give you the combat edge. Next, the EA Sports MMA demo will take you to the mat. EA Sports MMA brings the authenticity of the world's most intense combat sport to your 360. Choose from the world's top fighters or climb the ranks of the worldwide circuit with your own prodigy to become the ultimate MMA champion. After that, the Arcania Gothic 4 demo will immerse you in a world of fantasy. Ten years have passed since the end of Gothic 3 and the world has changed. The southern islands have become embroiled in a grueling conflict and set the stage for countless adventures. After whacking goblins, you may have a craving for demolishing robots. An enslaved odyssey of the West have just that. Get a sneak peek into the gripping journey of Monkey and Trip through a perilous post-apocalyptic America. Escape a brutal slave ship, dodge some skyscrapers, and fight some evil mechs. In downloadable content, Borderlands gets rebellious with Claptrap's new robot revolution. Toy Soldiers gets invasion. Buku Sudoku releases Puzzle Pack 18. Castlevania HD gets the Beauty Desire Situation Dire map pack. Rock Band releases the Anthrax Pack 1, and songs from other artists, including Closer to the Edge, I'm Not Okay, I Promise, and Out of Line. 
and Mafia 2 has a host of content, including the Greaser Pack, War Hero Pack, Renegade Pack, and Vegas Pack. In Video Marketplace, check out the Ruse Launch trailer, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning trailer, NBA 2K11 New Controls trailer, and get a laugh in with the Deathbank Thongs of Virtue story trailer. One day I'll have pig legs and a ship that's really big. Yaha, yaha, a pirate I shall be. That's all the time we have, folks. Join us next week for more This Week on Xbox Live. Giancarlo, I've got a question for you. Yes. Do you like to kill ants? Uh, yeah, it depends. Do you like to kill spiders? Occasionally. How about robots? Yes. Then I think we found the game for you. It's Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon. Earth Defense Force as a franchise has been around for years. Um, in Japan, it was a cult hit, came out uh, almost eight years ago now. And the basic idea of Earth Defense Force is soldiers fighting against massive numbers of insects. And it's anything from ants to spiders to wasps to you know, all kinds of different weird bugs and things. And there's also giant robots. I mean, it is coming from Japan after all, so this makes sense. So it's kind of a B-movie feel to it but kind of staying somewhat serious, you know, while throwing off one-liners every now and then, too. EDF was released uh, as a 360 game in the West. Uh, 2017 was the first next-gen game that came out in Japan, the rest of them having come out on PlayStation 2. But uh, we saw another opportunity to bring an EDF out to uh, people over here, and we said, you know what, let's go for it. Engaging Ravagers. The heads that were in charge of designing the original Earth Defense Forces are actually on board with this version of it. They've taken a look at our designs and everything like that for the enemies, taken a look at the characters, how we're doing the upgrade systems, and are kind of acting, you know, as an advisory. I mean, yes, we know what we want to do with the game, but it ensures that we're going to have an EDF experience. It's going to be what, you know, they would envision, even though it's going to have more of a Western slant. I will kill all of you! The upgrade system and everything like that has been completely revamped for this version, as opposed to just kind of collecting armor as you're going through and collecting weapons and hoping that you finally get that Lysander Z. Uh, it's more of a shop-based thing. You get credits as you go through and kill bugs and complete your missions, and you can then go into the shop and buy weapons for those different armors. Uh, there's four different uh, combat armors in this game as well, whereas the earlier games either had just Storm 1, which is kind of the trooper in this game, or Pale Wing, which is the flying armor from the earlier EDF. Uh, there's a jet armor, which acts very much like Pale Wing, uh, the trooper, like I said before, Storm 1. A battle armor, which is a new type. Uh, he's a very slow-moving, but heavy weapon, tank-type character. He also has an energy shield that he can put up in front of himself. And then there's also the tactical armor, who has a little bit lighter weapons overall, but he's able to drop different turrets, which uh, enable him to have like plasma uh, launchers all over the battlefield things like that, which you could do in the original EDF, but that kind of took up your weapon slot, and that's all you could do with it. The weapons are different per armor type, uh, but you'll see some similarities as well. So if you like an assault rifle type thing, you'll be able to find something similar. Well, the story for uh, EDF in Centaur Armageddon is kind of a split off of uh, where it is in 2017. It takes place in uh, New Detroit, and is about as coherent as you normally would get with a bunch of random aliens attacking the city and causing a lot of havoc. So yes, it does have a story and you can follow it and get a lot out of it if you really dig, but if you're just playing, it's not going to be, uh, you know, the focus and thrust of the, the experience. <laughs> so for this iteration, there is a online multiplayer mode. as uh, So you can go online, play with up to three other, uh, or up to two other players, so three player total online. Uh, for the entire campaign mode. So um, you can go on, play one by yourself with two bots, go online, pick up random people, play up three players, um, and choose all your armors and things like that, go into any campaign that you want to, and play. Um, as well, there's also a survival mode in the game, which is up to six players. And that's your fairly standard uh, survival mode where you've got wave upon wave of increasing enemies, where eventually you're gonna get overrun, but let's see how long you can live. 
Uh, one of the other things in the online mode, just in general, is that you can also help out your teammates. So if your teammate gets demolished by you know, an incoming ant swarm, he's lying on the ground near dead, and you can run over and actually try to save him, which plays a huge role in survival mode and trying to keep yourself up. Uh, the online and offline modes are exactly the same. Your character that you build up offline is also your online character. So if you're playing offline, you're basically playing the same thing you'd be playing online, but with bots instead of the uh, other player characters. Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon is going to be coming out for the Xbox 360 and the PS3 this coming spring. All right, everybody, it's time for the daily demo. Giancarlo has booted up the Assassin's Creed multiplayer beta, which is currently going on right now on the PlayStation 3. Giancarlo, I like to think that I'm pretty familiar with Assassin's Creed, but a multiplayer? A what? Yeah, this is uh, Assassin's Creed multiplayer, and it's kind of what you would think it would be. I mean, you kind of have all the skills that Altair and Ezio had in their respective games. Uh -huh. uh, but here you're actually playing as um, the Templars. You're not playing as a member of the Assassins. So you're playing as the bad guys. And this multiplayer mode kind of represents their training grounds so that they can actually compete with the Assassins, so they can learn their skills. Oh, OK. Yeah, so that's kind of the setup for this. And this, uh, the two multiplayer maps in the beta, both of them are in Rome. Uh, one of these maps is like kind of more of an indoor map. It's a uh, a little more confined. Uh, this other map we're looking at is more of an outdoor area, and there's much more areas to hide, there's more roofs to climb, there's more uh, spots to kind of sneak out and, you know, kill your, kill the other players. So right now I'm actually trying to track down my target, who's right there, and uh, he's- Oh, right, right in the throat. He so, needs that to live. Yeah, and so kind of the, yes, you do need that to live. <laughs> um, kind of the idea here is to murder without being seen. Okay. Um, and to avoid being murdered. So right now at the bottom of the screen, you can kind of see the radar that's telling me where my target is. Mm -hmm. And you know, from that, I, can, I know that he's probably up on the rooftop somewhere. Um, I kind of need to get vertical here, avoid all these people. When I start running though, it kind of gives away my position. It lets other players know that I'm not an NPC. Oh, okay. So that they, especially the guy who's specifically tracking me, it makes him easier for him to find me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a problem, so I can kind of change things up a little bit. So if I can find other NPCs that look like me, like let's say this guy over here, and if I start walking with him and kind of confuse the guy who's tracking me, there's a chance he might murder the NPC instead of me. Oh, okay. And that cancels his contract, right? So that he has to then... Yes, that cancels his contract, so he has to find another target. Um, in there. However, he successfully stabbed you in the chest. Yes. <laughs> but the cool thing is, is when you do stuff like that, I still get points. So if I fool him into killing an NPC, I get points for that. Oh, that's cool. Um, and your point totals actually go up depending on how stylish you are with your kills. So like if I'm completely silent and I manage to kill my target, I'll get more points for that than I am if I'm running like right after him. And that feeds into the, uh, the perk system, right? Yes. Yeah, so there's this whole leveling system where you get uh, new abilities um, and new levels. And so, kind of like some of the early abilities are a sprint, which you can see here. Gives me a little bit of extra juice there. Um, that is when you know that somebody is trying to murder you, when he charges at you with white contrails flying behind him. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and some of the later things that we've seen are actually pretty cool. Um, you actually get like things like smoke bombs, um, which are really useful for fooling your uh, pursuer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you also kind of get streak perks as well. So like um, there's a three kill streak perk where if you kill three players in a row, um, you'll get a 100 point bonus for doing that. So I'm actually gonna like stop talking just for a minute just sure. so I can find my target because. So let me, um, I've actually played a bit, of, a bit of this myself. So while you're playing, I'll explain how the interface works because for anybody who's familiar with Assassin's Creed, they'll know that this heads up display looks a little bit different. So that circle at the bottom, that tells you uh, where your target is. And as you get closer to him, the line is expanding. So John is getting close. And once it fills out, the dude is within sight of you. Uh, you know who to look for because that little uh, portrait in the upper right corner tells you which character model your guy looks like. So. That's the dude that you need to look out for. The little blue bar next to that tells you how, um, how uh, sort of uh, ninja-like you're being. Once the blue depletes, that means that you're pretty obvious and he knows that you're chasing after him. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much the main things to look out for. So Giancarlo successfully used that interface to stab a dude in the neck. I did, and, and sometimes it feels, you know, like the radar is really accurate. Like uh -huh. you'll have a really good good idea of where your target is unless they're actively trying to hide from you. Like I said, when you 
kind of hide in the crowd when you walk amongst other people that look like you or you do things like this, you know, there's, you have a better chance of survival. But at the same time, you have to realize that you're also trying to kill other people. Right. So you can't stay here forever. And uh, you'll know how many people are chasing you. See the, uh, like the red dots and the blue dots up in the corners underneath the portrait and underneath your rank. That basically means how many people are after. So there's only one person after me right now, but there's two people after my target. Mm -hmm. um, so, and there's a chance that people, and this happens quite often, people will steal your kill. So if you're not quick enough, you'll lose those points and you'll have to get a new con contract. See, like right there. And the guy just murdered me too. <laughs> um, so does it, you know, does it feel in control like Assassin's Creed 1 and 2? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it feels nearly identical. Uh -huh. um, These guys have trained in the school of Ezio and uh, yeah, I mean, Altair. As you can see here, it's, just, it's really easy to just climb up buildings. Uh -huh. It's really easy to get to where you need to go. You have little barriers here as well that are from Assassin's Creed. And, uh, and there's some little uh, new things. And there's these, the swan dive off the top of the building, which is great for if you are hiding from your pursuers, you can actually hide in here and you'll get points if you successfully hide from them. But generally, yeah, here, everything that you found in Assassin's Creed 2 is in here. Uh, some of the other perks you can get are things like uh, Ezio's gun that you saw later in that mm -hmm. game. You can get that in this as well. Um, so really interested to see how some of those later perks turn out. All right, cool. So uh, that pretty much gives everybody a good idea of what to expect from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood multiplayer if they're not already in on the beta. So Giancarlo, thanks a lot for demonstrating how that works. Now let's carry on with the rest of the show. So Sean, I've, I've watched today on the spot. Um, I know that sometimes we give away prizes on the show. That's true. We do that from time to time. Yeah, and I know that oftentimes they sit on that side of the desk. Right. So are you trying to tell me that all we have to give away to our, our great watchers is a cowboy hat? A cowboy hat? No, that's not what I'm trying to say at all. Uh, because in all truth, the cowboy hat is just a metaphor. Don't ask me what the metaphor is about because I have literally no idea. We've actually got a completely different pr prize that has nothing to do with cowboys. At least on the surface. Yeah. What we're actually doing is giving away a PlayStation 3 and a DS Lite, courtesy of our friends at WWE and the Sci-Fi Channel, because WWE SmackDown is moving to Friday nights at 8 o'clock, 7 central. If you guys want to win some of those cool prizes, you're going to have to answer the trivia question as follows. Name the top 10 WWE games on GameSpot.com according to the review ratings that we've given them. If you think you know the answer, send an email to onthespot at gamespot.com or use that little green answer trivia module on the page right here. And make sure to specify whether you want the PlayStation 3 or the DS Lite. You don't want to get a system you already own. All right, guys, and that just about does it for today's episode of the show. Giancarlo, in case anybody's missed it, there's some pretty big news that hit the site this week, right? Yeah, so Nintendo had a big press conference in Japan to announce sort of the details about the, their new handheld, the mm -hmm. 3DS. So we have a release date. They're going to launch it in February. Uh, we have a price. We have all these sorts of details, a little bit of the game lineup that they're going to have. So, uh, yeah, be sure to check out our news story and our, some of our uh, additional coverage from that press event. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching today's episode of the show. I'm Sean McInnes. I'm Giancarlo Veronini. See you guys later. I'm putting the hat back on. There's a snake in my boots. <laughs> Anyways, and we're also giving away a PlayStation 3 and a Nintendo DS later in the show. But first, as always, we're, I wasn't sure if we were going to Xbox Live or News first. Okay. I forgot.